soft and shining. That's the way your hair will be when you use Fitch's new cream shampoo. Fitch's cream shampoo leaves hair dreamy soft like moonlight, shining like bright starlight. Fitch is made with two beneficial beauty aids, lanolin and olive oil. Lanolin is used to soften the hair, to give it a brand new look. Olive oil is used to bring out sparkling highlights, to leave your hair gleaming and lustrous. And Fitch's cream shampoo is easy to use. A small dab whips into heaps of lather. Then, just rinse with plain water and every bubble of suds is gone. Your hair is soft and bright. Looks as though it had been brushed and brushed and brushed. Fitch's cream shampoo is thrifty, too. Compare the size. Compare its low cost. At drug or toilet goods counters, buy Fitch's cream shampoo with lanolin and olive oil for softer, shinier hair. Listen later in the program for Fitch's exciting Christmas gift perfume offer. This unusual radio offer will be made tonight only. <laughs> W. Fitch Company, makers of Fitch Shampoo, presents the Fitch Bandwagon, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Janine Ruth, Anne Whitfield, Robert North, Walter Scharf and his music, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> the Harrises have decided to buy a new dog for the children. Alice and her brother William have been out all morning looking for one. Phil was unable to go along as he had to attend his band rehearsal. As we look in at NBC, we find Phil and his musicians hard at work. All right, quiet down. Come on, quiet down. Quiet down. Keep it quiet and stop that arguing. Now, look, I'm the leader here, and you'll play the way I tell you. Now, wait a minute, Curly. We know we're doing. Don't talk back to me, Frankie. Now, if you guys want to play with me, you'll have to play right. Okay, Curly, if that's the way you want it, we'll play your way. That's better. Now, it's my deal, and it's jacks or better to all... <laughs> hey, Curly, we better stop playing poker and start rehearsing, huh? That's a good idea. That's the best thing you've said all day. All right, fellas, put the cards away, and now pay attention. I got something to tell you that's very important. Yeah. Well, the other day, I got a letter from the sponsor, Mr. F.W. Fitch, and he ain't happy with the band. He don't think we're high class enough. He says from now on, he wants us to play Greek concertos, Beethoven sonatas, and box few. <laughs> Are there any questions? That's a very intelligent question. Do you know any stupid ones? <laughs> hey, what do we have to listen to the sponsor for? He's only paying us, kid, that's all. That's where we get the cabbage. Oh. And besides yeah. that, if you don't remember, I'm a stockholder in the Fitch Company, and I want to do things to please Mr. Fitch. I think you're overdoing it already. What do you mean? Well, ever since you became a stockholder in Fitch, you make us guys shampoo our hair with that new cream shampoo. Well, shampooing your hair is very good for you. Yeah, but every hour on the hour? <laughs> Some of the guys didn't even have a chance to wash the lather out of their hair before they came down to rehearsal today. <laughs> Stop that exaggerating. Oh, yeah? Look at the violin section sitting there. They look like a row of short beards. <laughs> every time the brass section hits a high note, they blow the foam off. <laughs> Stop with that, Frankie. Stop with it. And don't forget, keep using Fitch shampoo, all of you, because it's great for you. I use it all the time. And look at me. I got a beautiful wave in my hair. I used to have a wave in my hair. You used to have a wave in your hair. What happened? She became a civilian. I ain't seen her since. <laughs> Hardy. You'll have to stop sitting in front of the trombone player. He's knocking your brains out. <laughs> now, look, from now on, I want you guys to act like gentlemen. Just try your hello, best to... Phil. Hello, Oh, oh, hello, honey. Hey, Alice, uh, you know most of the boys, don't you? Sure, hello, fellas. Hey, Curly, who's the blonde date? <laughs> Cut that out. That's my wife. Oh, leave them alone. I get a better reception as a blonde is. Hey, look, honey... 
Gee, I'm glad you dropped in. Did you have any luck? Uh, did you find the dog for the kids? Well, kind of. We found one, but it isn't just what we wanted. I brought it over so you could see it first. Oh, well. Hey, what kind of a dog is it? Good morning, Philip. <laughs> Alice, I told you I don't want no Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> Is this the Christmas present that you've got for our listeners? Oh, Phil, that's a surprise. I'm not spilling it. I haven't said a word. I just thought maybe we could throw your brother in, too, you know? <laughs> maybe don't... we could give him to Mrs. Subie in Fort Worth, you know? <laughs> Philip, Philip, don't be facetious. Oh, oh, you know, I selected the dog for the children that I just know they're going to love. You selected them. Oh, this I gotta see. Yeah. I have it outside in the car. Come along and I'll show it to you. Well, wait till I dismiss the band. Okay. All right, fellas. You can break it up now. That's all for today. Get lost. Take it a little bit easy now. Fine bunch of gentlemen, those guys. Hey, uh, let's see that dog, William. Hey, Alice, what kind of a dog is it? Is it, is it a big one like the kids want it? Well, I wouldn't call it big exactly. It's a Mexican chihuahua. It's a what? A Mexican chihuahua. Hey, Frankie. Huh? Hey, what's a chihuahua? Charlie, I'm surprised at your ignorance. Everybody knows what a chihuahua is. I had one once when I was in Tijuana. Yeah? Did you like it? Sure, it was delicious. <laughs> Now, you can't beat that Mexican food. <laughs> well, here we are. There you are, Philip. Take a look. The dog's on the back seat. Where? All I see is a shoebox. Lift the cover. He's under that. Okay. Well, all I see here's a price tag. Lift the price tag. He's under that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this is a dog. This little thing. I think it's a beautiful animal, aren't you, Doggy? <laughs> hey, Frankie, you better oil that thing. It's sweet. <laughs> I think it's a magnificent beast. He has beautiful markings. Look at his lovely brown coat. Are you sure this ain't a sparrow that was grounded? <laughs> hey, Willie, how could you buy a little tiny thing like this? Gee whiz, it's the smallest little thing I've ever seen in my life. I know the children ain't gonna like a little dog like this. Oh, I'm sure the children will love this. Let's take him home and see. Hmm? <laughs> All right, Alice, we'll buy it. Come on, let's get the car. Oh, shut up! So long, Frankie. I'll see you later. So long, Curly. I feel sorry for those kids getting a little mutt like that. They wanted a big dog. Hey, a guy was trying to sell me a great thing yesterday. I know what I'll do. I'll buy it and bring it right over to the kids. Oh, Remley, you're such a lovable little schnook. <laughs> Alice, I'm afraid to even show this dog to the children. They're going to be so disappointed. I'll show it to them, Philip, and I know they'll be crazy about it. Girls! Girls! Here we are, Uncle William. Children, I have something for you. Oh, goody, where is it? Right here in this box. Wait till I get the cover off. There. How do you like it? Alice, go get the mustard. Uncle William brought us a hot dog. <laughs> Enough. It's still barking. <laughs> children, children, please, this is a real dog. Don't you like it? Oh, sure, but gee, it's awful small, isn't it? Mommy, you said you were going to get us a big dog. Oh, we tried to, honey, but we couldn't find one. Maybe you'll learn to like this one. Now, why don't you and Phyllis take it out for a nice walk, huh? Oh, all right. But what do we use for a lady? Wait a minute. I'll see if we have a strand of spaghetti left over from last night's dinner. <laughs> don't, don't be funny, Phyllis. Now, here, children. I'll tie this string around it. There. Now, be careful. And... Phyllis. <laughs> don't, don't. 
lift the string up so high the dog is dangling. Yeah, it looks like you're carrying a yo-yo with legs. <laughs> See, but I told you, Willie, I told you they wouldn't like this thing. Well, I hate to admit it, but I guess you're right, Philip. I'll return the dog. However, I still feel you shouldn't get one much larger than this. Now, well, I'll see you later, Alex. Toodaloo, Philip. Or go toodle your own no. <laughs> Well, Phil, maybe William is right. Perhaps we shouldn't get too large a dog. The neighbors might complain. Oh, it's not bad enough that I got to be bothered with your brother. Now I got to worry about the neighbors too. It's getting so it seems like the only place a guy can do what he wants to is on a desert island or in the Congas. Each morning the missionary advertised with neon signs. He tells the native population that civilization is fine. And three educated savages hollow from a bamboo tree. That civilization is the thing for me to see. But bong a bong a bong I don't want to leave the Congo. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Bingo, bango, bungle. I'm so happy in the jungle. I refuse to go. I don't want no bright lights, false doorbells, landlords. He made it clear. Bong a that no matter how they go to me, I'll stay right here. Bongo, 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 a bongo, 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 a bongo, 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 a bongo, bongo, bongo. I look through a magazine, the missionary's wife can see. Bongo, bongo, a bongo, bongo, bongo. I see how people who were civilized bang you with automobiles. At the movies, they have got to pay many coconuts to see. Uncivilized pictures that the newsreel takes so free. No bong the bong the bong I don't want to leave the Congo. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no. Bingo, bango, bongo, I'm so happy in the jungle, I refuse to go. Don't want no jailhouse shotgun. We took off the penthouse, that's the street car, taxis, I've got my spear. So no matter how they coax me, I'll stay right here. Bungle, 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 bungle. They have things like the atom bomb, so I think I'll stay where I am. Civilization, I'll stay right here. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> the 
appreciation for you. <laughs> Bring this dog over for the kids and then... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Frankie. I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Well... Well, you know, it's really a lovely dog. But don't you think it's just a little bit too big for the children? Well, it may be big, but it's very gentle. Go on, pet it, Alice. All right. Well, Frankie, get it to kneel down so I can reach its head. <laughs> Oh, come here, doggy. Let me pet you. <laughs> oh, you have such a nice face. You do like me to pet you, don't you? <laughs> oh, you're a lovely dog. I've got to hug you. <laughs> hey, Frankie, you sure this hound ain't part wolf? <laughs> oh, Frankie, it's a darling. I'm sure the children will just love it. Mommy, Mommy, what's that? Well, honey, it's a dog Uncle Frankie bought for you children. Gee, what a beautiful dog. Thanks, Uncle Frankie. Oh, that's all right, kids. I'm glad you like it. That's the biggest dog I ever saw. I love it. See there, honey, I told you the kids wanted a big dog. Hey, and look how gentle he is, and they're going to get along with... Oh, that must be Julius bringing the groceries. I'll get it. Hello, Julius. Hello, Miss Faye. I bring a grocery order and here's your newspaper. It was outside. Oh, thank you. Oh, Julius, come on inside. I want to show you something we just got. What is this, Paul Mason? You'll see, and I think you're going to like it, too. Well, here it is. Miss Faye, ain't you been satisfied with our milk delivery lately? <laughs> Why, well, Judith, of course I have. Then why did you buy that cow? <laughs> that ain't no cow, it's a dog. Yeah, I bought it for the kids. They love it. Don't the dog and the kids look nice together in the doorway? Yeah, it's a pretty picture. With the dog standing there under the archway, and the kid standing there under the dog. <laughs> Ain't it a beautiful animal? Yeah. Hey, I seem to have seen that dog someplace before. Now, wait a minute. Miss Faye, where's that newspaper I brought in? It's right here, Julia. Yeah, only here, huh? Uh huh, just as I thought. Here's a picture on the front page. This is a stolen animal. You people have a hot dog on your head. <laughs> What are you talking about? Let me see that face. Hey. Hey, the kid's right. <laughs> Listen to what it says. Monarch the Wonder Dog stolen from movie studio. Two strange men seen loitering around studio a half hour before dog was found missing. Frankie, how could you possibly... Oh, wait a minute, Curly. I didn't steal a dog. Honest, I didn't. I bought it. Oh, Sarah, I'm sure Frankie didn't steal it, but you'll have to return this dog. Oh, Daddy, you have to take him back. Well, I'm afraid we got to, honey. It's not ours. Oh, Remley, come on, Pooch. I'm coming. I'm talking to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. See you later, Alice. <laughs> Mommy, we like that dog so much. Well, don't worry, girls. We'll get you another one. The studio is probably worried. I'd better call them and let them know your daddy is on his way over with the dog. I know how you girls feel, but you wouldn't want a dog that belongs to somebody else, and every time... Hello? Oh, this is Mrs. Harris. I'm calling about the dog that was stolen from your studio. My husband found it, and he's on... What? What's that? Oh, you've already found it. Then the dog we have isn't the one that was missing. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Goodbye. Mommy, does that mean we can keep our dog? Yes, and when Daddy gets to the studio, they'll send him right back with it. Gee, that's wonderful. Yeah, and it's going to make your Daddy happy, too. You like Daddy, don't you, Mommy? Like him? Come here, honey. I want to tell you something. <laughs> Secret, a secret, I've got a little secret. A secret, a secret, a secret kind of secret. 
I may be sort of sort of to do every that would do and tell the world about it. In fact, I say I will. If this isn't love, the whole world is crazy. If this isn't love, I'm daft as a daisy. With moons all around and cows jumping over. There's something in the middle, and I'll eat my hat if this isn't love. I'm feeling like the apple on top of William Tell. With this I cannot grapple because, because you're so adorable. If this isn't love, then winter is summer. If this isn't love, me heart needs a plumber. I'm swinging on stars, I'm riding on rainbows. I'm fast with bliss, and I'll kiss your hand if this isn't love. Drive it so slow, Frankie. I'm anxious to get the studio and get this dog off my hands. Drive faster, will you? Oh, nag, nag, nag. Oh, well, you... <laughs> now, what are you stopping for? Curly, I've been thinking. This is an important dog, and everybody's looking all over for the two guys that stole it. How are we going to prove that we didn't steal it? Nonsense. What are you talking about? All they have to do is look at me, and they can tell. I don't look like the kind of a guy who'd steal anything, do I? I don't know, Curly. <laughs> to hear you talk, you'd think I looked like the criminal type. You'd think I had a low forehead, a weak chin, and shifty eyes. Now that you mention Never mind. It. <laughs> All I'm saying is why take chances? Suppose they don't believe us. We can't prove our innocence. Uh, hey. Hey, maybe you're right. Sure. Hey, Frankie, we got to get rid of it. Look, let's palm it off on somebody else. Okay. This looks like a good neighborhood. Maybe somebody here would like a dog. Okay, but let's hurry and get rid of it. Now, look, we'll start at that house right down the street. <laughs> hey, Frankie, now, look, when they come to the door, what am I going to tell them? Just ask them if they'd like a pet. Okay. <clears throat> How do you do, madam? My name is Phil Harris. Do you want a pet? I gotta be more careful how I phrase this all. <laughs> hey, that dame sure packed the wall. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, uh, Frankie, why don't you try the next house? Uh, not me. With my luck, the next house would be Jersey's Joe Walker. <laughs> <laughs> now, there must be an easier way to get rid of this house. Yeah, but how are you gonna. Hey, wait a minute. What? Hey, look. Where? Hey, there. Right in our left. Look. There's a park across the street. Let's take the dog over there, tie it to something, and leave him there, huh? Come on. Okay. <coughs> Keep quiet. Quiet. <laughs> Thanks for playing with him. Yes. Hey, Curly. <laughs> Let's tie him to that fence there. Which one? The one that tramp is sleeping on. Oh, Come here, like Poochie. I'll just tie it to this fence. There. Come on, Curly. Let's get out of here. Hey, look at him. He's trying to follow. Don't no worry. Away. I got him tied. He'll never get away. Well, hurry. Let's get back to the house. And look, Frankie, now when we get home, tell Alice we return the dog to the studio. Hey, Alice. Hey, Alice. We're back. Well? 
What have you two been? What happened? Well, I'll tell you. We took the dog, and we took him back to the studio, and when we and took him... Yeah, they were very grateful yeah. for our efforts. Yeah. yeah, they were, huh? Yep. You know, fellas, I got news for you. I called the studio, and they told me their dog had already been returned. Not only that, the dog you say you left at the studio arrived here five minutes ago. Now, you boys didn't just tie the dog up someplace and leave him, did you? No. (laughs) (laughs) Fellas, look in the living room. What do you see? The dog. Yeah, the dog. Hey. Hey, what's that he's sitting on? He's sitting on. He's sitting on a park fence. He dragged it home with him. Where did he get it? Uh, where did he get it? Uh, oh, the president of the studio had a park bench in his office, didn't he, Hey, Frankie. Uh, we can stop now. I don't think she'll believe that park bench came from the president's office. Why not, Curly? The tramp's still sleeping on it. <laughs> Alice Clay, as a Christmas gift, the Fitz Company and I want you to have a lovely bottle of perfume. It's alluring, yet sophisticated. Gay, yet mysterious. Now, here's Bill Foreman to tell you how you can get your Christmas gift perfume. This amazing gift is offered tonight only. As a Christmas present from Alice Clay, Fitz offers you a full dram of this romantic new perfume. Its fragrant essential oils are from the world's loveliest blossoms in sunny Italy and the Rose Gardens of France. It's a perfume you'll want to wear or give as a gift. It would retail for $10 an ounce. Now, Fitch and Alice offer this enchanting perfume in a smart, simulated cut glass bottle. To get yours, send in the top from a Fitch dandruff remover shampoo carton, your name and address, and 10 cents to help cover mailing costs. Send to Fitch, sell... F-I-T-C-H, Des Moines, Iowa. Get your Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo now. Fitch is guaranteed to remove dandruff with the first application. Remember, this is the only chance to get your gift perfume. Send shampoo carton top, your name and address, and 10 cents to Fitch, Des Moines, Iowa. Offer will not be repeated. Good in United States only. my slippers all over the house. What's so terrible about that? I'm still in them. <laughs> Tune in next week when the F.W. Fitch Company again brings you the Fitch bandwagon with Alice Bay and Phil Harris. This program was directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Mel Blank and Ollie O'Toole. Alice Bay appears to the courtesy of 20th Century Fox. The part of Frankie was played by Elliot Lewis. Your Christmas gift perfume from Alice Bay. Get Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo now. Mail shampoo carton top, your name and address, and 10 cents to Fitch, F-I-T-C-H, Des Moines, Iowa. Bill Foreman speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm.